Hey, Mike, uh, obviously your uh, mobile defenseman and also Tristan with the stick handling have helped you guys break out cleanly most of the time. But I'm curious what the forwards have been doing the last two games to help neutralize their forecheck. Well, I, I just think to, to give yourself the best chance to, uh, to get out of your end, uh, you know, cleanly or to, just to get out of your end in general against a heavy four check team like the Islanders. And, and quite honestly, that that's where the league is, is trending. Um, it, it takes, it takes six players. And I say six because the goaltender is a big part of it as well. You know, Tristan obviously is a good puck handler. He has the ability to help us, uh, get out as well by making a first pass. If we can beat that first four checker, it, it increases your chances of, of your exits, uh, with possession. So. I, I just think it's been a collective effort with with six guys, and uh, you know that I think the wall play is so critically important uh, because a lot of times when you're under pressure, the puck has to go on the wall. It's just it's the safest play, uh, and and just the importance of of winning the puck battles on the boards and uh, in gaining lines. Sometimes you can't come out with possession. Sometimes you just got to gain a zone, and and so the guys are working together as uh, I, I think collectively to try to to try to beat. The heavy four check the Islanders are trying to uh, that that they're trying to present. Wes Crosby. Hey Mike, uh, we've seen uh, the impact that Jeff Carter's had on the ice um, since he's come in. But uh, from your experience, just being around him, seeing him around the guys, just what kind of impact has uh, he he brought to the room in general? Well, he's he's had such a positive impact both on the ice and in the locker room. You know, I, I I've spoken about this uh, frequently since we've had him. You know, just his demeanor. You know, he's a guy that's j just such an accomplished player. I, I I know when he walks into our room, our players have the utmost respect for what he's been able to accomplish in the game to this point. Uh, he's a two-time Stanley Cup champion. I just think he brings our dressing room a little bit more swagger. You know, and and he's been there. And so when when we get in the emotional environments like the game last night, uh, he has a a a calm sense to him, uh, both on the bench, in between periods, in the locker room that I think uh, that I think helps the overall group. So uh, he's really been a, a, such a positive uh, influence on our team, both on the ice, on the bench during the game, and even in the locker room in between periods and in the off days. So. He, he's been a great addition to this team. Rob Rossi. You've mentioned repeatedly in the past about Jake Gensel's toughness, and I know there's there's sort of been a mental makeup to that too. I've noticed these past couple games, just his ability to try to make adjustments with when, in, when he shoots the puck, how he shoots the puck. I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about sort of his mental acumen and, and also how that does relate to his physical toughness well jake's just a resilient uh, i i think he's a resilient player and he and he's a smart player so uh he plays the game with a lot of courage i i think he's he's as tough as they come he's he's willing to go to the hard areas to to score goals and get and, and generate scoring chances and he's willing to take hits to do so or cross checks or uh face washes wh whatever it takes and and uh and I think that's the value that Jake brings. I think that's why he scores as many goals as he does, but he's also a really smart player. So he understands how to how to use the, our opponent's uh, aggression against them. Uh, he can get to the quiet areas of the rink as good as anyone. Uh, and when he plays with Sid, obviously Sid has, has the ability to get him the puck and find him when he finds those quiet areas. So that that's just such an intangible that I think speaks to his hockey IQ and how smart he is as a player. So. You know, he instinctively adjusts uh, his game, uh, game to game, period to period, shift to shift, depending on uh, depending on circumstances. And, and and I just think it's that combination of his courage and his competitiveness uh, with his hockey IQ that that makes him the player that he is. Chris Adamski. Like I, you've at, you talked about the, the Teddy Bluger line, and I know you don't like labels. Maybe it's even me like like this label. But how do you a define and search for and a quote unquote bottom six forwards? How does that kind of fit into roles? How do guys learn to embrace that? I mean, everybody grew up was probably their the best scorer on their on their teams. 
or whatever and and what makes the good qualities of lines like that and you're an idea in an ideal world if you're trying to create your your own bottom six well I, I i think that's one of the things that players have to figure out as they move up uh the levels in 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 hockey whether you know you're in college hockey or junior hockey and then you and then you uh then you turn pro you know some players can score a lot of goals at the college level at the junior level but but don't have the ability to do it at the pro level and and so the guys that that i think uh have success in in making and staying in the nhl they figure out what they're good at and how to play to their strengths and so uh and and then they have they have they have to have the ability to adjust their game so part of it i think is is on the players to figure out what it is that's their competitive advantage that's going to help them have a successful career and then the other aspect of it is 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 what's the identity of uh of the team that you have and and the the, the group of players that that uh, that assemble your team and then the responsibility falls on the coach and staff uh to try to define roles and carve out roles so that uh so that players have clear expectations and a clear understanding of what their contribution is to help and uh, to help and to build the identity of the group and, and how they're going to help the team win. So we, we talk about that uh, a lot with our players and and what their respective contributions are and how we're going to utilize them uh, night in and night out to help us have success. Mike Pursuta. Mike, looking back at the Carter goal last night and the, the collective effort for check, how, how sustainable do you think it is that you can get the puck deep, get to it, make two plays below the goal line under duress to set it up? And how important is it to score that kind of goal against the team you're playing, the way the Islanders defend? Well, I think it's an important part of playoff hockey. You know, you've got to be hard on pucks. You've got to make sure you're strong at the lines. You have to get pucks down below the goal line. You've got to force your opponents to play 200 feet. That's that's just I think that's part of the the playoff success formula, regardless of 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 what your team looks like, and and so uh, you know th that's something that we have a discussion with our players frequently about, and and making teams play 200 feet and making sure that we're hard on pucks and and if we don't have any ice to play on through the neutral zone, the decisions we make uh, on the entry I think are critically important, and then the puck battles when they're 50 50s. Uh, you know, in the neutral zone, a lot of times the success you have in those puck battles is going to dictate which end of the rink you're going to play in. And so, uh, you know, th th those are important areas. Those are important decisions. And then the execution and the collective effort and just being on the same page and doing your job uh, at, as part of the forecheck is is going to is going to go a long way to helping your team have success. So regardless of what teams look like or who you're playing against, you know, I think when you look at playoff hockey, every every team that's left is good. It's the it's the best teams that are in the league that that make the playoffs, and so they're hard to play against by nature of that. And so we're going to have to continue to to be diligent with the puck, to be hard on pucks, and if we can establish a four check and and control territory, it's going to increase our chances of winning. We'll take a couple more, Shelley. Hi, Mike. You talked about Jake, but I want to expand on that a little bit. It's been a pretty physical couple of games um, on the official stat sheets. The Islanders have been credited with 118 hits um, for whatever that's worth. Some roughing penalties, some stuff in the second period last night. I'm curious how you think beyond Jake, the whole team, your team is responding to that. And is there at all a concern that that it might wear your team down to be in that physical of uh, games this early in the playoffs? No, I, I think uh, our team has responded extremely well and uh, you know we're we're going to try to we're going to try to play the game that's going to give us the best chance to be successful. I think this physical play is the nature of playoff hockey. I, I don't know if you guys watch any other series, but I haven't seen a game in, in any other series that hasn't brought a physical dimension on both sides. So our series is no different than any other series that's going on in the league right now, and and the reason is is because these these teams want to win. Uh, the players that are involved are emotionally, physically, they're totally invested in trying to and trying to win games. And and the and the physical part of the game is 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 I think a uh, a byproduct of that. And so uh, our series is no different than any other one. Uh, that's what makes playoff hockey exciting. I think our guys are responding extremely well. We're going to try to play the game that gives us the best chance to be successful. Jim Colony. 
Yeah, Mike, you, I guess you touched on some of this when Pursuta asked about the, the five on five stuff, but more specifically when it comes to the power play, the Islanders are so aggressive. Uh, what can you guys do to take advantage of that aggression? Well, I just think it 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 comes down to uh, to execution. You know, we've got to support the puck. We've got to make the puck work. Uh, we've got to recognize where uh, where our release points are. Uh, but most importantly, I think it, it's more about support and uh, and puck battles. And if if we can win some puck battles, if we can support the puck, uh, I, I think we can try to beat their pressure. They're a very good penalty kill. We knew it was going to be a big challenge going into this. Uh, but anytime you're playing against a kill that's as aggressive as as the Islanders is both down ice, uh, but also in zone, uh, we've got to do our best to support the puck and make the puck work. And I think if we can do that, we we, we should be able to generate some chances. Jenna Harner. Mike, how do you guys just kind of carry the momentum of what you did last night, especially now that you're headed over to their place? Well, I, I just think we're going to try to learn from the experience. You know, it's, uh, it's one game. Uh, we felt it was it was we played a good game on our, on our, from our standpoint. We're going to watch the film. We're going to try to learn from the experience. We're going to put it behind us and get ready for the next one. That's the approach that we're that we take with this team, regardless of whether we win or lose. That's the approach. So, um, you know, that I, I think there are a lot of good things that we can take out of the game last night. There are some areas where we know we can improve and get better. We'll take a look at those. We'll move by it and get ready for the next one. Last question, Matt Benzel. Mike, you were almost able to get on a plane without us asking you about injuries. Uh, can we just get uh, injury updates and specifically with with uh, Malkin and DeSmith, will they be on the trip with you guys? Gino will come on the trip. Uh, Casey will not. Uh, they did not skate today. 